Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be testing out a bunch of new at Sephora makeup products. This video is actually in collaboration with Sephora for their hashtag new at Sephora campaign. I'm going to be doing a first impressions, like I said, of most of these products uh, and like little reviews, little thoughts about each one. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and let's begin. I am gonna start by priming the face and today I'm gonna to be using a longtime favorite of mine and that is the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless smoothing primer. I do have moisturizer on so I'm just going to be pressing this uh, into the areas where my foundation usually lifts up or breaks up throughout the day. So with this primer what I do is warm it up between my fingers because my skin is really dry and it can be a little bit like balls up on the skin if you're not properly hydrated. Um, and then once it's warm, I press it and kind of pull it out uh, into the pores. Under the eyes, I'm going to be trying out a product that's very new to me, and that is the Dr. Brandt Needles No More, No More Baggage Under Eye Depuffing Gel. It says you can apply it over or under makeup, and it's supposed to instantly minimize the look of under eye bags, puffiness, and dark circles. I'm going to take a really tiny bit because skincare freaks me out a little, and I'm going to warm it on the back of my hand and just dot it where I have the most baggage, which is pretty much like my entire upper cheek region if I'm being real with you. It feels like it depuffs it in that regard. Um, it doesn't feel like super tightening or anything weird like that. It feels a little bit witch hazily, I guess. It does dry down without feeling sticky. It feels like I have nothing on my skin, but I can feel a very cooling action happening. For foundation, I'm gonna be trying the Milk Blur Liquid. This is a product that has to be shaken really well. I just did it off camera to save you the visual of my double chin face that I do. Um, pretty much this, uh, I don't know anything about this. Let me, let me look up some facts. So Milk says, from blurring pores and fine lines to providing weightless full coverage, blur liquid matte foundation does it all for normal to oily skin. It's a wee bit dark. Just a tad. First thing I'm noticing is that this smells really good and it also, despite like really as soon as you start blending it, it looks like it sets down into a matte finish. It's not making my skin look dry. A lot of times with like mattifying foundations, I'm, I'm looking super dry and texturized right off the bat, but this one still keeps the integrity of my skin. It also covers up all of my little dark spots and small breakouts really well. And as you can see, I'm not using that much product and it's really stretching out across the whole face really nicely. So dried down, doesn't feel tight or anything at all. Feels like I have nothing on the skin. Very pleasantly surprised. For some reason, I thought this was gonna be like mattifying but very wet feeling because it has um, a lot of, I think it has coconut oil in it, coconut water or something. Thought it was gonna be like an overly hydrating, thick matte, but it's really not. It's very lightweight. I feel like this would be perfect on those of you who are super oily or have issues containing your oil throughout the day. For concealer, I'm gonna be trying the new uh, YSL All Hours Concealer. Just gonna dot this on under the eyes in a very light layer. This concealer is supposed to be very great coverage as well as super long lasting. Ooh, the first thing I'm noticing is that this blends out so so naturally that Dr. Brandt uh, No More Baggage isn't causing it to look uh, disrupted, if you will, or funny. Sometimes skincare can do that if you layer very pointed products under makeup, like a treatment type of skincare. Sometimes it can interfere with the finish of the makeup, but it's really not lifting anything or making it look weird. And I feel like this concealer, despite being kind of thick, really looks uh, nice and natural and very brightening. To set the under eye and key areas of the face, I'm gonna be trying out the I Want Candy Banana Pudding Brightening Face Powder by Too Faced. And for the under eye, I am going to be lightly dusting my beauty blender in one corner of this. This is super yellow. How did I not see this coming, you know? It's like, it's bright yellow darkening me up just a tad. It doesn't uh, emphasize any texture or fine lines or anything like that. It's very smoothing. It's just I feel a little too dark for me. I feel like you wouldn't get this result if you didn't apply it with a beauty blender. That's obviously going to make the product a lot more dense and kind of make it a little bit wet. So it's going to affect the pigmentation of it a bit, but I feel like with a brush it would apply really seamlessly under the eyes. On the face, I'm just going to press it in the areas where I usually get I almost said get a little bit warm, get a little bit oily throughout the day, and right away I'm noticing that it really just gives you an airbrushed finish, which I really like. To set the outer regions of my face, I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Peaches Peach Blur Instant Smoothing Finishing Powder. It's an all-over finishing powder that warms the skin and is a little bit pearlescent to smooth out your lines. So I'm just gonna dot this around the corners of the mouth here. 
because sometimes uh, mattifying foundations really settle into my smile lines and it's not so cute. And then out at the outer corner of the eye, when I smile, my foundation settles in those little lines too. Um, it's really subtly luminizing though. It's nothing over the top or like a highlighter at all. And when I swatch it on the hand or the arm or whatever, it does look very peach, pinky peach, but on the skin you really can't see it. It's very invisible, very translucent. All right, moving into the eyes, I went ahead and primed off camera. I am gonna be trying out the Natasha Denona Lila Palette. So this palette is full of hydrating, water-resistant formulas with ultra-high color payoff that lasts all day, infused with real crushed pearls and extraordinarily rich pure pigments to achieve an artistry finish. Let's do this. So I am going to start off with the shade Per Se, which is like a purpley violet gray, and I'm just gonna dash this into the direct crease. I don't want to take it too high because I'm not going for a smoky vibe really, but who knows. Oh, this is so pigmented, whoops. Okay, so I guess we may be going smoky because I dipped my brush into this a bit hard. So I'm just gonna try to blend this out without it looking messy. So this shade blends out very nicely. Basically blends itself out. I put a little less on this side because I wanted to see how well it would stretch when you blend it out and it really just melts into the skin. It's very, very nice. All over the lid I'm going to use the shade Helio. It's honestly like a grayed out, slightly violet taupe metallic. I'm going to apply this with a finger first and then kind of pat it out with a, a blush, a brush, all over the lid just to diffuse it up into the crease really seamlessly. This is really pretty. It's very creamy but not like oily creamy like some metallics can be. It feels like it sticks down but not in a way where it's going to crease or anything and it blended out like perfectly with the finger and it's also uh, appearing to do the same with the brush. Under the eye I'm going to go in with the shade Nude Mauve just to play up uh, per se but not match it totally and I'm just going to concentrate this on the outer edge and then slowly diffuse it up toward the inner corner. I feel like this shade really brings out the purpley undertones in that metallic shade we used without distracting from the original gray in the crease. It adds a nice amount of dimension without it looking like misplaced or anything like that. On the inner corner, I'm gonna be taking the tiniest bit of the shade Juno, which is a very light lilac color, and just focusing this mainly on the lower lash line of the inner corner. Now that the eyes are complete, I'm gonna obviously use some mascara. I'm gonna be trying out the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. This is supposed to be very lengthening. I'm a huge fan of Lancome mascaras, like the littlest, do you see how long these are getting? The littlest amount goes the longest way. So like in your everyday looks, like if you just wanna wear mascara, you can quickly brush some on and get like a, such a natural fluttery doe-eyed lash effect. That's how I usually apply them, but they also do build really nicely. Overall, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, it really applies very easily. A lot of times with new mascaras especially, they always get on my lid, but this did not whatsoever, which tells me it's not very goopy, messy formula. Um, it also dried really quickly, but didn't clump up when it was drying down. That's another thing I noticed with mascaras is when they dry down as you're applying them, that's when the clumps tend to happen, but with this, I didn't get any of that happening. Moving back into the face, just gonna finish things off as I usually do. I didn't have any new bronzer, so I'm just gonna use one that is a tried and true favorite. That is the Urban Decay Beach Bronzer in the shade Bronzed. This is like the perfect terracotta shade. It can be a little dark though because it's very pigmented, so I'm just gonna use the lightest bit. Just dust it over the areas where the sun usually hits. My favorite thing about this bronzer is that it's very finely milled. I would say it's a really great dupe for the uh, Marc Jacobs bronzers. I feel like it's slightly cheaper. I think the Marc Jacobs ones are close to 50 and this one is in the $30 range, so it's a great alternative for those of you who are not ready for the splurge or who don't want to splurge, you know? For blush, I'm gonna be going all in and using the big blush book by Tarte Cosmetics. There's seven blushes and a highlighter in here. I think, what looks best? I think I'm gonna use this one. It's a nude, the shade Kindred. I was gonna use the shade Poised over here, which is like a pinky lilac, but I wanted to kind of let the eyes stand on their own and be the only purple thing. So using a more cool tone nude blush will help frame them, but not compete with them. Going back to the foundation, like I said, my skin's super dry, uh, as you know if you've been here a while, and usually when I layer a lot of product over a foundation that's also very drying, it can tend to lift the foundation right off of my face, but this one's really sticking down. My face feels a little bit tight right now, 
so it is quite drying, but nothing's lifting up, which is very, very pleasantly surprising. To illuminate, I'm gonna be using the new Hourglass Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. I think today I'm gonna mix these outer two, the shades Absolute Strobe Light and Lucent Strobe Light to create the perfect pinky taupe. And I'm gonna take them on a bigger brush just so that they can be really nicely diffused, kind of like a natural glow from within effect. Okay, I'm obsessed. This is like such a nice wet look. I do have some texture happening up here that it's not emphasizing to the max. Sometimes with Hourglass products, because they're so dry, they do emphasize the texture on my skin, but these are not doing that for me, which I much appreciate. They're also not very glittery whatsoever. I'm also gonna take a little bit down the center of the face, just to make myself look, you know, the most the most dewy I could possibly look. Last up, the lips. I'm gonna be trying out one of the new Bite Matte Cream Lip Crayon shades. They came with four new shades, I believe. This one is in the color Sugar Cane. It's a nice, dusty, mauve -y pink, which I feel, again, will not only play up the eyes, but also not be too similar to them. It'll, I'm going for a framing effect. And I'm gonna line my lips with this and then fill them in. I'm not usually the biggest fan of mauves on lips just because, I don't know, it's not like my go-to color, but I actually feel like this is really pretty. It has just enough pinky red undertone into, into it, in it to where it doesn't look gray on me. Formula-wise, it feels exactly like the Amuse Bouche lipstick, but in pencil form, which I like because you can line your lips with this. My lips are a little bit asymmetrical, so I always line them, and it's just kind of a nice all-in-one slap-on-and-go product. Sephora also sent over some perfume. I am the type of girl who once I find my fragrance, I tend to stick to it, but I figured that this would be a good opportunity to try out something new. So I did try these before this video just so that I could give you guys the best descriptor because I am not so great at describing scents. It's just not my forte. So these two are the Elizabeth and James Nirvana Amethyst and French Grey. The notes say that Nirvana Amethyst is a creamy bouquet of sweet honeysuckle suckle, mingled with the refined richness of tobacco and cedarwood, while uh, French Grey is floral with notes of neroli and lavender and musk. I personally prefer Amethyst. This one's more fruity. It has a very cream sickly smell, and this one I feel is a bit more mature, a bit more powdery, which is very typical with Elizabeth and James. Usually um, their fragrances are just too almost dry smelling or musky for me, but Amethyst, I've really been loving. I've really been liking this both as a body spray and a room spray. And for what it's worth, when I spray on perfume, I always hit the hair. Just one spray in the hair because then it will last days, I tell you. And with that, today's video is complete. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and for supporting me and my channel. Without you guys and your support, I likely wouldn't be asked by brands like Sephora to feature products for them. Definitely one of the coolest uh, partnerships. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite new at Sephora products are or what new products you're looking forward to. And subscribe if you have not already, and we will chat again in my next video.